Hello and welcome to tonight's live stream for the Freedom Series with Dave Thompson from In Inspirational Book Writers. Mate, how you doing? Hey, Barry. Awesome to be here, my man. Mate, so stoked to be here. I want to speak about freedom and more specifically, I want to dive into how creating your own book or your own IP can really help a business owner to create more freedom. But before we do that, mm -hmm. uh, let's just introduce you. Like, I'm so grateful to have you back. We had you on the Comeback Game podcast yes. uh, a couple of months back. Mate, tell us what it is that you do. Like, what is your superpower? Yeah, cool. So I think, um, you know, writing a book is a thing that a lot of people, uh, they really want to do, not only as a personal thing, but as a thing that's big in their business. And our, our superpower that's kind of built out of, out of the business is to be able to draw out the message of people, get the book that's in your head that you just can't get out of your head to get yeah. it out of the head. And, to, and for that to happen quite quickly, you know, and for yeah. it to happen with a lot of accuracy in terms of the message capturing all of the flavors and the culture and the values that you stand for. Because so I think yeah. that's a big thing. Authentic books these days, yeah. they're the ones that are really going to win. Yeah, I love that. We actually met many years ago doing um, the same NLP course, Neuro Linguistic mm -hmm. Programming. Mm -hmm. um, obviously traveled the similar circles for a long time. And I approached you a couple of months back. I, I put together my book and just wanted to get some hints and tips around some certain elements mm -hmm. and noticed that you'd been doing a fantastic job working with many friends of mine, mm -hmm. extracting all their knowledge and information into a book um, to be able to publish and many of the hitting bestsellers as well. I guess from my own journey, um, it was a very interesting thing because growing up, I, I couldn't read and write very well, mm. um, like not very well at all. Mm. You wouldn't want to see something necessarily written by me. My, gram my, my grammatical issue you know, uh, status is terrible. Uh, spelling is not very good at all. Mm. But yet I felt for a long time that I'd accumulate a lot of experience in business and a lot of experience in you know coaching people for more than 15,000 hours in the past few years. And I knew that it was more than, than a book for me. I knew it was a book for other people, mm -hmm. right? Like, why is, why is a book so important around a, a piece of intellectual property for a business mm -hmm. and for a business owner, do you think, especially with how noisy the marketplace mm -hmm. is right now? Mm -hmm. Well, I, I, think, I think it's a tool that can really represent your brand, your culture, and the values that your business holds, mm. as well as the problem that you solve. And, and I see it as, a, as, a, as almost a sales qualifier in the mm. sense that, you know, the, I, I've, I've just released my new book, Write, Publish, Launch. If I want to, if someone's thinking about maybe working with us, I can just go here, read this, mm. check it out. If you're on board with the ideas, if you like the flavor, if you... Uh, on board with the strategies and the way we do this, then give us a call because we'd probably be a great fit to work together. Yeah. So I think it can really speed up the sales process and you'll get a lot of the feedback we get from our clients is they're like, Dave, I'm showing up on sales calls and people are preloaded with mm. my stuff. Mm. And basically they're just, I just help them decide, well, do you want to go for package A or package B? Yeah. Yeah. So like, I really like that. I think that's a, like, there's many benefits, but I think that's a big one. Dramatically speeds up the qualification, the sales process. And look, welcome. If you joined us live on one of the platforms, welcome to uh, this episode of the Freedom Series live stream uh, with Dave Thompson. Uh, my team's interacting each, each of the uh, different chats and forums. So if you've got questions at all throughout for me, or Dave, please feel free to chuck them in there. The team will pass them through. We're happy to answer your questions. And also make sure you like and hit this. Start a watch party. Uh, share this with others who are at home. And, and uh, no doubt we'll get some gold out of the things we speak about tonight. Mm. I want to kind of change the subject a little bit and then we'll come back. And I want to speak about freedom for a second. Mm. Like what is freedom for you, mate? What do you believe freedom is? Yeah, so I think, I think it's freedom to live my values mm. on a daily basis. And, you know, this became a really important concept for me um, when I finished school, I studied to be a lawyer and I actually became a lawyer and was working in a, a, law, a law job. And I realized that's not going to give me the freedom that I desire. Yeah. And so getting into, getting into business, it was, I absolutely had to build a business that provided that freedom. Yeah. And so for me, freedom means, it means a lot of things, but a big part of that is having time and space to adventure Yeah. and, and be out in nature surfing yes. skiing these these sorts of things because for me if it's pro profit is important success is important but it 
if adventure falls off the side of the cliff while mm. those things happen, that's that's not the success I'm looking for. Yeah. I, I meet, we meet many business owners and the vast majority of them have a similar, I guess, perspective as you. Like they went into business to create some aspect of freedom for themselves, mm. right? More than they, they felt they could achieve through employment. Mm. And especially now more than ever with what we've just, just been through with the um, COVID-19 and the pandemic mm. and mm. now a, a, a recession coming through as well. Mm. A lot of people are evaluating whether or not their current employment or even what they've currently been doing in business is, is providing the things they want. Many people, I'd go as far to say, they learned to live with a lot less than what they had at the start of the year. Mm -hmm. And many people actually found that they were a lot happier mm -hmm. than at the start of the year, yeah. having less. And their values changed, maybe to be more holistic, maybe more family oriented and so forth. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately though, you know, we've seen the statistics, 96% of people uh, in business fail within the first 10 years. Mm -hmm. They don't reach a place of profitability. They don't scale past a million dollars and they certainly don't build a business that can work without them, which, mm -hmm. you know, is why I, I went about like writing this book Yes. You know, it's something that I've achieved for myself and I've helped so many other people create is businesses that are purpose driven, that are profitable and that work without the business owner. Why do you, why do you think that so many people fail to like succeed in business when their core motivator is to create more freedom? Mm -hmm. I'm going to answer that by actually referencing a, a video that I saw you do a couple of years back. Um, and I believe that you were talking about how it's the, the reason why they don't achieve it is because of holding on to control. Mm -hmm. Like not willing to let someone else do the job. Yeah. Not willing to bring team in, to bring systems in, to bring support in, to just hands off the thing and go, it's, it's like that trust piece. Yeah. Like, and I think that's what, that's what I, I really see in the work that, that you and your business does is you help people to, to have to take the hands off, but then to actually see, oh, this thing's actually still working without me. And not only is it still working, it's working better. Yeah. Yeah. And the beautiful part too, though, is things are going to break when that happens. Mm -hmm. But I love when things break. Nick, didn't you used to always be like that? Like I used to hate when shit mm -hmm. would happen in business. Mm -hmm. Now I love it. It doesn't happen as often, but I love it because it shows where the gaps are. Mm -hmm. And I guess like it's a really, really great point that you you raised and something we hadn't pre-rehearsed at all before mm, this conversation no. is is what we call the inner game versus the outer game mm -hmm. like it's very easy to go to most other coaches out there certainly very easy to go to youtube and to research like how to hire team members how to run a successful interview how to you know write a vision mission value statement how to set goals how to implement systems that's all great but they're the steps and the steps are actually easy regardless of what your business are the thing that's hard is to shift the business owner's identity, to shift 20 years, 30 years, 40 years of conditioning, right, from early childhood mm -hmm. to where they are now, as well as the conditioning of their generational system that they've taken on board, which a lot of people don't even speak about, mm -hmm. right, that is actually the core driver to one element being control, mm -hmm. you know, worthiness sense of belonging, all these things that actually prevent business owners from letting go of the steering wheel because they're so ingrained in, in this un, uh, unconscious identifier to the business giving them a sense of value or worth or belonging. And to let go of that baby, it's, it's kind of, it's, it's no different than dropping your child off at school for the first time. Mm. They've been at home for you their whole life. You've looked after them, you've cared for them, you've changed their nappies, you've fed them, everything else. That first day, and if you're a parent, you can remember that feeling, the first day of dropping your kid off and like wondering whether it's okay to go or not. And maybe your kid cries, maybe it screams and you want to run in and help it. But you know, the more that you do that, the more you're actually creating more pain for the process to move forwards. Business is, is, is no different, I don't feel, than, than that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I feel, I feel that totally. And control and significance, especially if you're good at what you do mm. and you're known and there's identity around being known as being excellent at your craft to then step away. Sometimes that can feel empty for people. Yeah. I've, cer I've certainly found for myself. And, and I think the reason why I bring up the inner shift first is I've found when I get the inner work, right. That the, the outer strategy just 
it's just it just appears it just falls into place it's just the steps and you just take the steps i've found the hardest thing for me personally has been getting that inner peace aligned and when it does then everything moves yeah yeah it, it's a very very relative point and i remember years ago we tried to launch a campaign like a marketing campaign around like mindset and the inner game and it flopped the lead cost was ridiculous unfortunately it was what people need and they still need today and now slowly there's more so-called gurus talking about mindset and psychology and belief systems like they've eventually got caught on board mm -hmm. the reality is is I, I honestly believe and i've seen time and time again that a business will never outgrow the founder mm -hmm. and that we never have business problems we have personal problems that get expressed through our business mm -hmm. now the the feeling that we have to reject that is further proof of how much you're blindsided by your own beliefs. No, 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 I've got a staff problem. No, no, Barry, you don't understand. I've got a cash flow issue. No, you've got a personal problem and you can't see it because you're too focused on the symptom of the problem. The problem is always us. Mm -hmm. We're the bottleneck for our business growing mm -hmm. and surviving. Nobody else, mm -hmm. not the economy. Not that I, I know so many business owners that have killed it in the last six months in Australia with the bushfires the pandemic. And I've known many that haven't. And I look at them and they're running the same types of businesses, mm -hmm. fitness businesses, mm -hmm. yoga studios, right? Marketing companies. The difference was the business owner and how they showed up, not the market they were in, not what was happening around them. I 100% agree. Yeah. Just yes, that. Yes, yes, that. <laughs> if you're watching this, please uh, share this, start a watch party, uh, ask any questions that you've got. I've got a couple of questions here we'll get to in a second, but... Let us help get this message out to more business owners. It costs nothing to do that, but more business owners, I think, need to hear the real cause of what's going on for them. Because once we know what that is, we can then start to research, we can then start to fix it. But if we're still trying to like find the magic formula for finding the right staff member, you're gonna end up in that same cycle that Einstein talked about the definition of insanity, doing the same thing over, over and over and expecting different results. The inner game is where it starts and where it ends and everything else falls to play after that, as you so beautifully put. Uh, so a question here from Dave from Sydney. Uh, could you tell us some secret formulas to launching those bestsellers? Mm -hmm. It must be something repeatable for sure. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, give us a couple of little, without giving away all of your amazing paid IP. <laughs> um, in a sentence, it's, it's like the effect that you want to create with the launch is like, like pulling back of an arrow and building the tension, aiming it, and then mm. release the arrow to hit the target. So it's like it, you want to build this wave. And so when it launches, it you're focusing all this attention on it in a short period of time. Yeah. Pressure. Pressure. You 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 want all uh, you want as many eyes on the book in as short a period of time as possible. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I love that. I've got so many analogies, but you've just nailed it. Bullseye. Bullseye. Go for the bullseye. Um, you know, ride, ride the wave. That's another one that, that, that I use is, you know, posi position yourself among, um, I mean, one, one idea that I, that, I am, uh, that I can share is uh, an idea that I got from Seth Godden, who's a, who's a marketer. And he talks about sneezing. He mm. says, if, if I sneeze, my sneeze has a certain radius. But yeah. if I enroll 10, 20 people who are if near- I've got coronavirus when I sneeze, <laughs> the whole freaking country catches it. That's right. Right. And look how fast the virus moves. Yeah. <laughs> I can't you know? believe I dropped that. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, 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 I started it and you just took it even further. <laughs> But but it, I think that's that's a, that's a useful analogy, especially in the social media world that we find ourselves in. And you know, this is this is, you, you know, you're using a derivative of this strategy for your launch too, is by enrolling people uh, to to help you sneeze about the message, yeah. then the the sneeze goes further. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I would even question though, too, um, it's interesting, a company I'm working with, they're like, you know, what do you want? Do you want New York Times bestsellers list? Like, what's your strategy? Because each, each, or sorry, what's your outcome? Because each outcome has a different strategy. And I guess the question for Dave from Sydney and for anyone else thinking about that is like, for what purpose? Like, what's the purpose behind building the book? Like for us, 
our uh, bestseller list would be amazing, but it's not our focus. Like our focus is how can we get, how can we get this book in the hands of as many business owners and entrepreneurs in the world as quickly as possible? Mm-hmm. Like how can we help to eradicate entrepreneurial poverty? Because now more than ever, business owners need advice. And, you know, through this book, we give them the exact steps, the exact steps that I've used time and time and time again in my own businesses and the business of clients. But more importantly, we, we leave the psychology in it because it's not enough just to go and, like you said before, like just do something. You've got to think differently. You know, the way that you think as a business owner running a $100,000 a year company versus a million versus a 10 million is very different. The thinking is very different. The way that you use the resources around you, money, cash, time, people, very, very different from 100,000 when it's like, oh, I'll just do everything myself because I can't afford to pay someone versus like a million or 10 million when it's like, cool, who can I get to do this? Who's the, who's world-class? Who's the best in the business? Yeah. Yep. Love that. So if you've got more comments, put them in the chat. I uh, love to answer them. So what, what is your motivator? Like what drives you in business? Mm. Cool. How deep do we want to go? Down the rabbit hole, man. Down, down the night. rabbit hole. So, yeah. okay. So I was, I was born on a remote island in Papua New Guinea during a time of civil war. Wow. And then a couple of years later, I found myself as a, as a toddler um, living in the Middle East during the Gulf War. So w- war was a big part of my upbringing. And there was always a part of me that was like, I just couldn't understand. I was like, why are the humans fighting? Mm. Like, I just, it did not make sense. Mm. Why are we fighting? Mm. Still doesn't fucking make sense. It still doesn't make sense. And as I grew up, I I started to become very interested in truth and justice. And I guess that's where I thought I'd, I'd be in law. And then when I found books, I realized that if I could help great people who had great ideas, who had great mm. stories, great methodologies, who had, who had truth, who had love and wisdom and insight and solutions, if I could help them to get their thing out of their head and into a book, and then that goes to a whole stack of people, I thought to myself, maybe we can change this. Maybe we can wake people up. Maybe we can like drop a book on someone's desk that makes them realize. Not their head. Not their head. Just drop (laughs) it on their desk and go, actually, maybe there's a better way. Yeah. And so honestly, that's what drives me because I don't want to live in a world that has war and dysfunctional systems and massive problems. I do want to live in a world that um, is full of truth and wisdom and insight and, and peace and, you know, maybe call me idealistic, but yeah. the big driver for me is this, this I, I just want the world to be a better place and this is my humble way of, of attempting to make that impact. Yeah, through Purpose Driven Entrepreneurs. You just totally channeled a question from Hannah, uh, Hannah from Melbourne just asked, Dave, who's your favourite writers to work with? And you just totally channeled that in your response to sense, so hopefully she heard that. Um, another question here: How uh, is he helping magazines, newspapers that go to him for help? Uh, how do you keep afloat in these times? I'm not sure I fully understand the question. You don't help? Do you help magazines, newspapers? No, no. I mean, a lot of our a lot of our clients end up featured in magazines and newspapers. Yeah. You know, yeah. and that, that that is one of the purposes of you know getting a bestseller kind of ranking is is yeah. then traditional media is more likely to pick it up. I think there's always going to be a place for print media too. Like I think about um, we've used, we've used physical sales letter, letters recently, like physical ma- mailable sales letters, which used to be the big thing years ago before email and everything else. Like I think everything's uh, cyclical, but I also think too, like, I don't know about you. Like I, I listen to audio books and I read books. Yes. So I, I've always got a book next to my bed that I read every day. I mm-hmm. highlight stuff and I'm always listening to a different audio book at the same time and, and for me audio books will never replace like a physical physical book on my shelf yeah yeah i i agree i agree i mean audio books are there there's they're definitely a a growing segment um and one of the they're experiencing big growth in the audio book segment but um there's there's nothing like having the the physical the physical thing i think i think physical books will always be here in su- to some extent 
Yeah. And, and we've had uh, another question too, like you're aware it's easy to create electronic copies of books, right? Mm -hmm. uh, does he think publishers are threatened by e-media? Um, I think maybe the traditional publishers are. Yeah. Um, big big behemoth publishers that rely on that rely on old models um, of basically making uh, their money off book royalties. Mm. You know, I think I think if if you're up with the times, you'd be aware that the the new way of using books in the new economy um, is to is to use the book to open the door to where you want to go. So. Um, to, to, you know, I, I say a book can be a golden handshake. Yeah. To open open doors to where you want to, wherever you want to go, and and where you want to go. I say it's a bit like a fun park. It's like which yeah. ride do you want to ride? Pick your own adventure. Yeah. Mm. It's interesting too. Like it is. It's super easy to self publish through companies and places like Amazon these days. And I, I, again, I, I guess it comes back to the question earlier: is it's like what's the outcome mm -hmm. of the book? You know, like. I'm, I've, I've got no desire to be a, a profitable author. Like if that happens, mm -hmm. amazing. I, I'm not sure what sort of career path that is these days, um, right? Uh, but that's not my outcome of my book. And probably a lot of the people you're working with as well, they're not doing it. They've already got successful companies and businesses. And they're like, how can I reach more people? How can I solidify myself as a thought leader in the industry? How can I extract like for me, 18 years of business experience. I've been in business for 18 years, extracted into one book. Um, and I Huge. could probably still write another, another four or five. Yeah. You know, like that was the one thing for me as I went through this process, like I had some help kind of getting the things out. We wrote a chapter a week for 14 weeks mm -hmm. and uh, like it's 85, 90,000 words. But what I was amazed at is from the initial contents page, how much knowledge I had inside around each particular subject Mm -hmm. which having a conversation like this, I never would have thought that much would have came, come back out. And I guess if anything, for me, it further solidified those 18 years of IP, those 18 years of experience and knowledge and insights into, you know, the best of the best into that book. Yeah. Because, because the new, the nuances, yeah. the, they come out and um, like the nuances are often the things that are most valuable. Like the general rule is this, here are the exceptions, but if it's a Wednesday and the moon is full and this is happening with your cash flow, then do this. Yeah. 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 Interesting. Funny you mentioned that. Um, I, I was doing some study around companies launching products under a full moon or a new moon. Mm -hmm. Have you heard about that? Uh, not that specifically, but I, um, I mean, I'm, I grew up as a fisherman, so I know that the, the moons affect the tides and the tides affect oh. the fish. So the, the, the moons affecting the humans, I'm, I'm on board with that. I think that's yeah. a thing. Something to check in on for sure. I know the yeah. same too with vegetables and plant life. There's mm -hmm. certain times to pull weeds, certain times to sow seeds, certain times to harvest, mm -hmm. uh, based on the moon cycles as well. My grandfather was, was heavily into that. Mm. Yeah. 100%. Okay, so we, we've touched on freedom a little bit um, and touched on mindset. I probably want to circle back to the mindset aspects. Like, you know, you've been in the game for a while. Mm. You've done a lot in that in a game space as well mm. as obviously your strategy space. You, you, you've grown and growing a very successful company. Mm. What have been some key milestones or breakthroughs that you've had in the past years of your business mm -hmm. within yourself and within your mindset, within your inner game to be where you are now? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. Um, I think what the biggest, the biggest breakthrough that really got me started was, was realizing that things don't need to be perfect. Mm. They just need to go and that there's so much value in acting on the inspiration of an idea and then filling in the pieces afterwards. Yeah. Cause otherwise, otherwise what happens and, and I think this, particularly when I first started out, I'd have a great idea, but I'd hold on to it. Yeah. And so I'd never know if it was actually great out in the market because I just didn't, I wasn't getting the feedback. But as soon as I started to let ideas fly, I started to get feedback. I started to learn, oh, that was a good idea. That was a half good idea. Oh, that was a really good idea. Yeah. And I feel like it was that letting go, let the ideas fly, throw, throw them, put them in the market, test, get feedback ear to the ground it's like sniff around like what what are people saying 
it was that um, responsiveness that really helped me to figure my way through the maze of business in the early days. Yeah. Do you think that many business owners are possibly too rigid? Like for whatever reason, there's this experience where they move into their own business. They've got an idea of what to create and what to build and they get too stuck or too rigid with building that thing or that idea working that that's what cripples their growth because they, they don't keep their head to the ground. They don't innovate. They don't allow those first few years of business to define what the market actually wants from them. Exactly right. Exactly right. I think, and I see this with people who they, they really want to have their entire online course all set up and ready and, and all the links clicked and the whole sequence set up but they haven't actually thrown it out there and said, Hey, what do you guys want in this course? Yeah. Yeah. And, and you know what, like if we, if we bring this back to psychology, Mm -hmm. right. It's that part of us that wants to belong. Mm -hmm. Like there's that aspect of us that is so fixated on believing that that thing is allowing us to, to achieve some sense of belonging deep within that we're not willing to be wrong, that we're not willing to fail, that we're not, but, but the thing is, I believe is that the only time we fail is when we stop trying. Mm-hmm. Like why are we innovating? Why are we have our ear to the ground? Why are we allowing our business model to be shaped by the needs and desires of like successful companies solve problems for people and people pay to have problems solved. Mm-hmm. Does it really matter whether that problem looks like this or just slightly looks a bit different like that? Like you're fixing a problem that hopefully you're passionate about fixing and people want to pay for that. Yet if we're too stuck and too fixated on trying to prove ourselves right, we end up proving ourselves wrong or failing and failing to really innovate and grow a great company. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think it's that responsiveness to the problem because people will tell you what their problems are. Mm. And then if you make something for them, every time someone's said something and then we've made a feature in the program for them, they're like, Oh, this is the greatest day of my life. Like you guys are the best. Thank you for making this feature. This is exactly what I needed. Yeah. And we're like, well, we were just listening. Yeah. You said you were struggling with A. We gave you A. This this comes back to like I recorded a, a, a video that I released during um, COVID around how I'd never been through a pandemic before, but the, the principles that we use to grow companies still work as well, if not even better during those times of before. And we proved it. We've got multiple companies that all saw exponential growth in the last six months, as well as many of our clients as well. Mm. And one of the core things, there's, there's five different parts, mm. but the one core thing I'm speaking about is that, right? Is message to market fit. Yes. You know, the, market, the market shifted and evolved. And you look at how many people now are overstocked on hand sanitizers. Yeah. Right? Because they were too late to the party. Mm-hmm. Versus those that got in early, those that got in early on the mask, those that got in early on the hand sanitizers, those that got in early and shifted their, their gym to offer online training over Zoom, right? Those, those that were willing to let go of what they knew and what was working and what, what once worked that mm-hmm. may work again in the future mm-hmm. to meet the people where they're at, meet the conversations inside their head, innovate their business and their delivery of their product and service. They were the ones that saw exponential growth because they got out of the way of themselves. Absolutely. I, I mean, that was, that was kind of, I can totally relate to that. That exact thing happened um, in 2019 for our, our business. You know, we'd been running in-person book retreat uh, weeks, you know, big experiential events, week-long events. And I got to, into 2019, I was like, this model just can't, it's, it's, it's not working anymore, but I don't know what, what else to do. Yeah. And then, uh, early in December of 2019, it just clicked with me one, one, one day. And within a day and a half, we were able to turn the model and make it online. Yeah. 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 Like it can happen that quickly. Yeah. It really if, can. If you want to let go of your ego. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. And, and that's, that's a key to building a business that's purpose-driven, profitable and can work without you. You're ability to let go. Your team aren't always going to do the things the way that you think they should be done. But if they get to the outcome and they get to the outcome in accordance with living the values as well, does it really matter whether they follow the exact same steps as what you would have? Not at all. Mm-hmm. Not at all. 
Uh, if you guys are watching and enjoying this, hit the like button. Uh, make sure you tag someone and even start a watch party as well to share what we're talking about here. Uh, and if you've got any questions, please jump in the chat. There's a uh, person here who's jumped in. They've just jumped in off the Gay uh, Doolin live stream a little while ago. Who I'm not sure if you know her or not, but she's a storyteller. She's okay. stuff with um, corporate companies, helping them to kind of tell better stories, both in their marketing, mm. but also internal stories to their staff. It was a pretty mm. amazing interview. She told a phenomenal story at the end that just hooked in. Mm. I'd like to know, uh, what does Dave consider to be his most powerful human story that pushes him onwards? So you obviously shared that one about you growing up just before. Yeah, that I mean, that's that's a big one. Yeah. That's, that's a big, big central one. Um, my mind goes to to Viktor Frankl in the Holocaust, Man's Search for Meaning. Yeah. And, you know, again, it's it's a war-related theme, but to, to really feel into his words in that book and and the devastation and the the intensity of the situation he was in and for him to find purpose out of that and a reason to live and a and a reason beyond himself to to keep going no matter what like yeah i i just i really relate to the warrior like the warrior archetype the warrior spirit and i think that man against incredible odds just sh showed himself to be one of the strongest spirits of yeah. I I that, that perhaps humanity has, has ever seen. Yeah. The, the man search, the, a man's search for meaning was a phenomenal book. And I'm curious to know, do you, do you believe that the end game or the goal or uh, he even knew that aspect of survival you spoke about Mm. Or do you think that was more so a byproduct of his conviction in a vision and a mission far greater than him? Because here's a man who's in the concentration camps, right? And everyone else around him is dying, getting taken off to the gas chambers or getting killed in other ways. And he seemingly kept dodging bullets. Yeah. Right? Seemingly kept dodging bullets. Now, I don't believe it was because it's like, oh, I believe like I'm going to survive because the reality outside of him was not that. But a lot of the others were pinning their survivability on like, I've just got to get through to this Friday and then this is going to happen or this Thursday. And then that came and gone and it shattered their spirits. Yeah. And I, I, I had like a mini, mini version of this during isolation, right? Mm. This is the longest I've been situated in one particular place. Mm. Now, in knowing myself, it's like I need to create something that my focus can go to that's far bigger mm. and more stable mm. and more certain than the current economic and uh, you know, pandemic times and the leadership from the government. Because mm -hmm. if I'm relying on any of those things to align, I'll be right. Like, like, <laughs> I'm screwed. Yeah, that's they're they're in chaos right now. I'm screwed. For me, it was my my health and fitness. Like I was talking to Trav Bell um, on a live stream the other day, the bucket list guy. Mm -hmm. You know, we had a very similar, um, un, un, unrelated. We didn't know it was happening, but both of us made a decision separately mm -hmm. uh, that going into COVID would come out of it better. Yes. Yeah, better mentally physically, emotionally, financially, spiritually, we both made a decision like, like we're going to not only kick this thing in the face, yes. we're going to come out the other side better for it. Yes. And that was a decision we both made. We happened to come together partway through. He'd been, he'd been winning and doing it. I'd been doing it on the own side. As opposed to like what I saw was a lot of people allowed to kind of overcome them because there was no certainty in it. Yes. So coming back to Viktor Frankl, like, like do you believe that it was his belief in survivability or more so a vision and a mission far greater oh, it, than it, it, it was. I think it was definitely the vision and the mission. He, he yeah. wanted to bring, I remember him saying, and it was a long time ago that I read the book, so I, I might be off on the actual specifics of it, but I remember him saying that he just knew he had to get this story, like this story had to get out there. So therefore he had to get out there too. Yeah. And is it um, Simon Sinek that said with a strong and compelling enough reason why the how takes care of itself? Yeah. yeah. And I, I, I believe that and have experienced that so many times where we've set goals or we've had our vision of something that's like, we have no idea we're going to get there, but it feels right. And we need to do that. Yep. And everything starts to align and fall into place. It's not easy, but everything starts to come together to achieve that. Yep. And it brings forth resourcefulness. Yeah you know, to, to, to find the way, to make the way, to 
to clear a path where there is no path. Is, is that not entrepreneurship though? I, I think a hundred percent it is. Like think about this, the, the Wright brother, I, I spoke in one of the previous live streams, the, the, the Wright brothers, like, could you imagine how much they were mocked and ridiculed when they're like, oh, we're going to create this thing that flies. Yeah. Now, had they have chosen to either, number one, look at the fact that it didn't exist and believe it was impossible, or number two, listen to those around them. And there would have been many around them that laughed and ridiculed, the same as any great entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. Yet they chose to think something different. They chose to have a grander vision. They chose yeah. to focus on something far greater than them themselves, which I feel is what pulled them through. And us as entrepreneurs, if we don't have a clear vision, a North Star. Yes, Something that, that, and it can be money to start with, but it has to very quickly change. Because mm-hmm. if it's money, that's not going to stain you emotionally when shit hits the fan and it's going to, like mm-hmm. you are going to get knocked the hell down time and time and time again in business. Mm-hmm. But that vision and mission, I think, is what pulls us through the same as in, the, in, the, in Man's Search for Meaning. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think it's that conviction and, and the, you know, in, in, this, in these times right now, like, it might, it might be, it might be really dark and really bad where someone is, but it's not always going to be like that. No, no. It's, it's, it's just a season. And if you can hold on to the, to the vision and keep reminding yourself of that vision of what things could be like or how you want them to be and make a decision that you're going to get there no matter what. Yeah. 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 I, I I often like, I love, I love that. I often say to, and, and it was one of my um, spiritual teachers, you know, he often said, he's like, oh, so there's a door over there. Mm. And he's like, if I, if I take a step, have I reached the door yet? It's like, well, no, you've just taken a step. He's like, right. If I take another step, have I reached the door yet? Mm. No. Mm. Right. But if I just keep stepping, will I reach the door mm. eventually? Mm. And this is what I think with businesses is, is it's like, be okay to not compare your business back end to somebody yes. else's highlight reels for sure which is what happens so often on social media right we compare a uh, 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 full manuscript to someone else's highlight reels yeah like be clear of what you want be clear of why you want it and every day get up and take a step towards it some days you have to crawl yes right but every day as long as you take a step towards it you'll eventually get there and as you said you know regardless of the darkest times you might be in right now look back into your life and look at when else you had an experience a situation that you thought you'd never survive mm-hmm or you thought you'd never get through. Mm-hmm. You're here. Like mm-hmm. you're here now. Mm-hmm. You got through, you found a way. Mm-hmm. That, that's, I mean, in the, in the book writing process, um, cause we, we do, we do it quite intensely. One of our programs is write your book in a week. And, and there's hundreds of people that have done that. Yeah. Um, and sometimes, and, and the, we have check-ins, regular check-ins. And sometimes I say to people, that are in a, in a bad way at a particular check-in, I just say, do you reckon in the next three hours you could write one word? And they just go, yeah, I reckon I could do one word. Mm. And then by writing that word, you're already starting to build the momentum towards positivity and towards success. It's a reference point. It's like, I set a goal to write one word and I did it. Yeah. Okay. Now, how about two? Yeah. And and this is how we this is how we get people to, um, to 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 build momentum in a positive way towards what they want to do by just getting those reference points of hey, because it's it, it it also builds self trust. Yeah. And integrity and self. When you say you're going to do one thing and you do it, oh, dude, I'm, I'm the type of person. Yeah. Go ahead. No, 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 no. Like I wrote about that in the goal section. I've never heard anyone else share that before. Like, but I was like, if we let people down, if we say that we're going to do something and don't do it, we're training ourselves. We can never achieve our goals. Yeah. Whereas if we're living our life constantly congruent with saying something and doing something, when we go to set a goal, we've already built the muscle. I say the muscle. We've already built the internal dialogue, the mindset Mm -hmm. that we're going to achieve that goal. Yes. Because our life is proof that we achieve what we say we're going to achieve. Yes. And, and make it easy, make it easy on yourself to win, you know, you know, make it easy to win. Like um, we say, go, go for the low hanging fruit. Like r- writing a book is just a constant process of going, all right, where's the low hanging fruit yeah. oh, there? Where is it now? Oh, it's there. Where is it now? It's there. 
that's how momentum is built i love that anyone on the call uh thank you so much for spending your evening with us i uh, really appreciate your love and support hit the like button um david people want to they're like oh i'd love to write a book like writing a week scares a shit out of me but hey you've done it before hundreds of times like there must be a proven system there how can they find you or get in, in contact with you yeah so um two best places uh join me on Facebook. So literally hit me up on my personal profile yeah. um, or inspirational book writers on Facebook yeah. um, or our website, inspirationalbookwriters.com. And I'll get my team to post it in the comments too. So you guys can make it super easy to click on that. Awesome. Sounds inspirational great. Bookwriters.com. And I've got a couple more questions. Uh, Go for it. So one thing I've been asking all the guests is if you have a conversation with a younger version of you, let's say uh -huh. it's a 10 year old version of Dave, uh -huh. what advice would you give him? The words that are coming to me are um, <laughs> don't listen to the old dudes, like the old, <laughs> stiff, the old, stiff, crusty dudes. <laughs> because, because at that time in my life, they were um, lawyers, right? <laughs> yeah, they, they, were, they were trying to shepherd me towards this. Like, I think I was like nine years old and I read a John Grisham novel, and John Grisham is all about lawyers and justice and stuff and so at nine years old and he's reading an adult novel he's gonna be a lawyer thanks mom thanks dad i was like i think it was more teachers at that time actually because yeah. the teachers were surprised my parents weren't surprised they were like yeah he reads of course he's yeah. gonna be reading that but yeah that my, my advice would be don't, don't listen. So, we're gonna make a quote quote cut of that <laughs> don't, don't listen to the old crusty dudes <laughs> <Dave Thompson. laughs> But I, th I, th I, think, I think more, more generally, if I pull the theme out of that, is that we're in a very transformative uh, era in yeah. the world. And, um, and, and to really question old traditional wisdom, because there's a lot of new that is bubbling up. And so um, it would be, a, I, I'd, I'd say to my, my younger self, back yourself in your innovation. Yeah. In, in who you are. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah, I love that. I actually um, interview a close friend of both of us, Clint X. Morgan. Oh, yes, um, yes. I was writing a chapter on entrepreneurship and it kind of just came through me out of nowhere. Like it was not pre-planned what was coming through. Mm -hmm. I was in tears writing that chapter. And I actually rang up Clint and I was like, oh, buddy, I'd love to interview your perspective because we have similar thought patterns and beliefs around that and uh that's chapter 14 where we talk about like entrepreneurship and what i feel it truly truly means to be an entrepreneur and how you can tap more into that innate knowing that intuition that heart-centered intelligence that i think is what what's the core of driving and building great businesses and is is the new era i think you're going to see a lot more people tap into that space and they're already starting to talk about it so look if you'd like to get a copy of my new book or start to date with all the live streams and the guests my team will put a, a link below. Just sign up. We'll keep you up to date with uh, any of the guests we have coming on. We're doing a few interviews a day over the next six weeks and also uh, let you know first before we release the book with all the bonuses too. Um, Dave, anything you want to end with? Um, I just really want to encourage people to go and get your book, Barry, because guys, like that, the great thing about books is you get someone's life experience for 20 bucks or 30 bucks or, you know, well, I don't know what deal you're doing. 5000 5000 $5,000. $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, $5, dollars I've known people that have- Me too. I thought about it. I that have pre-sold their book. The value is well beyond there. For sure. But that, like, and that's the thing. You've, you've been in this game for 18 years. All your experience is there. You've packaged it up into something that's like the size of a, a, a takeaway box. Yeah. You know, I just want to really encourage people to go get it because, you, man, you've- you've you've paid your dues you've walked the path and what you've got in that book is some seriously good stuff that'll just i feel the acceleration in it for people mm. like i feel books and i'm like yeah. i'm like that book that is packed with 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 good good stuff yeah thank you i appreciate that one one thing we did too like i've read a lot of books yeah i've, yeah. I've read a lot of books um I read my first book at 18. Mm. I couldn't really read through school. That's, that's no joke. And yeah, it was right. a business book. Um, and that's all I've kind of read since is business and psychology and spirituality. Um, and I read a lot of books and they kind of like leave you more confused or things like that. And like, I don't want to be that dude. Like I want 
people to read my book and whether they decide to work with us or not, they've got what they need to move forward. So what we actually did is we went and created a, uh, like an SOP, uh, like a how to, mm -hmm. to implement each chapter that we give away with the book. Oh, that's so cool. literally you read the chapter and then there's like a one to three page cheat sheet of the specific steps of how to implement that chapter into your business and into your mindset, which I, I, don't, I don't know of anyone else that's done that, but I'm like, I want people to walk away and their businesses be transformed as a result of reading the book. That's that super was, cool. That was my intention. So uh, appreciate the plug. I'm so grateful you stayed up late to, to jump. Yeah. I know we're a bit later than normal. My computer decided last minute to do one of those auto update things. I think I'd be putting it off long enough, but uh, appreciate your time, love and everything you shared. Uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please like and comment, uh, share it on your friends and uh, we'll absolutely keep you up to date with the next ones coming forth as well. Dave, thank you so much for your time. Awesome, Barry. Great to be here, my friend, and all the best for the, for the launch coming up. Thank you so much. See you, everyone. Thank you so much for tuning in to this episode of the Game Changers podcast. Uh, there's a couple of things I'd love you to do to help us and help yourself to spread the message further. Uh, make sure that you like the Game Changers on Facebook, Instagram, uh, YouTube, Twitter, LinkedIn. Uh, please subscribe by clicking the link below to ensure that you keep up to date with the weekly episodes we uh, share here at the Game Changers podcast with amazing entrepreneurs and business owners around the world. And of course, like if you're in a position where you may be overwhelmed with business or looking for a way to grow faster and more effectively, and you realize that the key to success is being surrounded by amazing people who have been there and done that before, I'd like to invite you to apply to have a game plan session one-on-one -on -one with one of my team here at The Game Changers. There's no cost. If you get through, uh, all that we ask is that you are doing a minimum of $250,000 per year to really be able to utilize the strategies and the tactics and the mindset shifts that we share with you, uh, that you're coachable, that you're a decent person and you're, you know, you're willing to take on board some advice. If not, that's totally cool. Uh, but I know for me, I wouldn't be where I'm right now without the support of so many mentors and coaches and resources along the way. And I'd like to pay that forward and give back to you the opportunity to work with uh, us one-on-one -on -one for free to put together a customized game plan. And the reason we're doing this is a couple of things. Number one is that sometimes it's just the smallest thing that can make the biggest difference. And uh, I think that entrepreneurs and business owners have the option to change the world. And if we can maybe help you to, to make the smallest shift to change your life and your world, uh, you're changing ours in return. The second thing is that we are always looking for amazing clients to work with and to welcome into and invite into the Game Changers community. And so if at the end of the call, you do feel that there's a huge amount of value there, uh, that we fit, feel that there's a great values fit there, we can have a conversation about working together. But uh, this game plan call, there's absolutely no obligations to work with whatsoever. Allow us to help you with uh, the years and years and years of, of knowledge that we have in growing and scaling great companies. Companies. And uh, I think that uh, business owners are the future of the world. If there's a way that we can help you to create a better business, more profit, more fulfillment, more fun, I would love the opportunity to do that now. So click the link below, book your game plan session, make sure you follow us on social and start to date with the latest episodes of the Game Changers podcast. My name's Barry William McGinnity. Thank you so much for your support and look forward to seeing the next one. Bye for now.